So here we have refined the model by manually adding in mass points. We now see the first mode is nearer to what was calculated. We also see that we have a second and a third mode before the axial mode that was the second one in the first exercise. These still don't coincide with the exact calculated values, however, but we seem to be getting closer. So we still need to increase the number of degrees of freedom even more. It should be noted here that the displacement being shown on the plot is normalized, and these values do not have units applied to them. It isn't practical to keep adding nodes to long lines until we achieve the correct results in a complex piping system, so we need an automated way to discretize our geometry. Autopipe uses the same equation from Rourke, but this time it uses the equation for a simply supported beam, because that's what most of our piping models will be. If we rearrange the equations, we see the minimum calculated span length is 2.732 meters or about nine feet. And this is less than the five meters or 16 feet that we were seeing in exercise two. So the program has a way to assign mass points at a span length equal to one half of the value calculated. So there's a mid span node by selecting A in the edit model options for mass points per span and entering the desired cutoff frequency, which will be used in this equation. Let's go back to the workbook one more time and refine the model using this automated method. Returning to Autopipe for exercise three, we'll continue with the same model, but we actually want to delete the points that we manually added in in exercise two. So I'll do this by coming to my home ribbon tab and under the clipboard grouping, I'll click undo. And you can see that last addition of those points was reversed. So now I want Autopipe to actually automatically add in some additional points for me along this pipe. And I can do that by coming up to Tools Ribbon tab. Under Model Options, I'll select Edit Options. In the Mass Points Per Span input, I will input A for automatic. Remember, this will use Rorik's equation. And when I press Tab, we have to input a cutoff frequency to be used in that equation. So we'll enter 100 hertz. And then I will click OK. What this has done is added points to my pipe, even though we cannot see physical points added to the pipe. If you want to review how many points were added to this piping model, you can do so by looking at the input listing. So if I come to the result ribbon tab or the home ribbon tab, we can access the input listing. But from the result ribbon tab, under quick reports, I can select input listing. And I want to move the coordinate sub report over to the selected reports and click OK. In the coordinate sub report, if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see that there were 10 mass points added along the pipe between points A0 and A1. Remember previously we added two points, now we're adding 10 points. So we're taking this 49.21 foot section of pipe and dividing it into 11 equal pieces, refining the model much more than we did in exercise two. So I'll close this report and I'll rerun the analysis, coming to the analysis ribbon tab, selecting analyze all and clicking OK. And again, we'll review the mode shapes. So on the result ribbon tab, under interactive, I'll select mode shapes. I see that there are now 13 mode shapes to review and I can animate the first one. I see that again, my very first natural frequency has increased a bit to 1.1781 Hertz. This is the vertical component. And if I click next, I see the horizontal component. My second frequency is 7.29 Hertz, vertical and horizontal. My third frequency is 20.16 Hertz, vertical, and horizontal. My fourth frequency is 38.9 Hertz, vertical and horizontal. 
My fifth frequency is 63.14 hertz, vertical and horizontal. My sixth frequency is actually the axial mode. It's producing a response axially along the pipe, and that's at 84.9 hertz. And then my seventh frequency is occurring at 92.18 hertz. And again, I have vertical component and horizontal component. So although Autopipe is reporting to us 13 modes, we actually have seven frequencies that we expect to produce a response from our piping system between zero and 100 hertz now that we've refined our model. Keep in mind that this is the same exact model that we used in the very first exercise where we only obtained two modes. The program has split this 49.21 foot length into much shorter spans, which makes it possible to calculate all of the natural frequencies up to the 100 hertz cutoff. And our frequencies are also much nearer to our predicted values from the Rourke calculation. So let's go back to the presentation one more time to summarize our findings and learn a bit about static correction methods. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.